weird little small shop out in out in Heartland, Coffee Springs, Alabama. Uh, we're a little small town. Matter of fact, we're the only business in this little town. I guess uh, what got the business started, we've just uh, always been interested in, in firearms and, and hunting and enthusiasts. And I worked out at Fort Rooker for many years and got laid off several times. And uh, so got in, went to uh, the machining school to you know, get another trade. And uh, that expanded into our little business and, and uh, we bought a few pieces of equipment and uh, started doing custom rifles and custom work. And, and uh, one thing led to another, just kept our interest kept expanding. So we, we went and got a FFL license and, and uh, started selling, selling guns and also, like I said, did, just doing custom work. And then when uh, Alabama legalized short barrel rifles and shotguns, we decided to uh, get into that because we figured it was a, a good market and then it kind of had people wanting silencers and we uh, ordered a couple and uh, they were just uh, took forever to get them and the quality wasn't there so we decided to try to develop one of our own. Coming home from church, so good Lord bless, coming home from church, come up just pop out a pot in my head, why I take a, why I try to make a, a milling machine do what EDM machine does. Uh, use a milling machine for its strong points, which is three-dimensional cutting. And so I had a, a design popped in my head and uh, I sketched it out when I got, got in from church. And that Monday I made the first 22 suppressor. And uh, it was a lot bigger than what we got now and very bulky. But uh, long and short, it worked. And it worked very well. And we compared it to some of the other 22s that we had in the store at that point in time. And uh, other than the size, we were every bit as quiet as they were. Basically what makes ours stand out is a, it's a fully machined 3D program from a, from a, a, a one-piece core, which is a monolithic type suppressor. There are several out there that are kind of an S shape. There's some that has a, a bunch of Ys that are inverted and upside down. And, and a, a couple more of just, just straight slats. And what, but what makes my our monocle different from all them others is the fact that when the gas on them, all the, all their support is at the top angle of their bushes. In other words, they're trying to direct the gas away from the center hole, but they're directing their gas right up into their support for their monocle, which is a lot closer. Then it comes comes back out and escapes the gas. We by having our design a three dimensional cut, our supports are on the sides, and the the baffle sits here with the support being here. So the gas, when it travels up now, instead of just hitting that, that rib, which would be the support, it now has to travel up and around the tube and then come back down, which keeps makes our gas stay in the suppressor longer before it can escape out of the, the center hole. And the whole way of making the suppressor work is to holding the gas and keeping it cool. But the design being that the gas has a lot of, lot of traveling to do, there's none back flowing through the rifle. So what they call blowback. So that's, that's one of your things on your automatic rifles that your gas comes back up through the rifle and gives you accelerated bolt velocities, overpressurize your bolt, causes premature wear on your rifles and your semi-autos and stuff like that, and you start having to weight things back. Ours is very minimum. Also cleaning. It doesn't have a lot of, a lot of your power, unburnt powder and stuff coming back up into the gun. It stays in the suppressor and blows out the, the rear of it. We use a 4.6A titanium and uh, we use preheat treated 17.4 pH stainless steels which is the, the best material that I know of out there for the environment that a suppressor operates in as far as your high temp and a lot of corrosiveness so uh, both of those materials hold up very well. You just take a, a wall piece of uh, stainless or titanium stock then it's turned down to the proper diameter and uh, threaded and then it's put into the, uh, the milling machine and then the uh, 3D baffles are actually milled down into the core and uh, it's all all threaded where the uh, diffuser and uh, blast baffle can uh, be screwed onto it and uh, it is uh, basically uh, a modular type suppressor where if any component in it happens to get damaged it can be taken apart and replaced without having to uh, cut the whole suppressor apart. Ours is totally threaded and is repairable. 
And we've got our, our sizes down to where we're, I'm comfortable with them. I, I like the design. It's, it's, we've kept our expansion chamber and our overall suppressor to, to the size that it is. Soft on AR, AR style semi-automatic rifles. And uh, we've designed our blast baffles so the first round pop on the uh, sub caliber, uh, subsonic calibers are very nominal. Yeah, uh, matter of fact, we've about got it down where it's, there is practically no sub, no first round pop. There's no really distinguishable difference between the first round and all the subsequent rounds. Currently, we do a stainless steel and a titanium 22 suppressor. They're uh, six and three eighths inches long and uh, uh, one inch in diameter. And it's a uh, uh, the tube is not threaded, all the threads go on the suppressors, so that minimizes the, or maximizes our internal volume while mem minimizing our outside diameter. To keep, or you got a full sight picture, it doesn't interfere with the sight picture. And we make a 223 suppressor, which is good on the AR-15 style as well as a boat, boat gun, a lot popular for hog hunting now. And uh, we make a 30 cal. Win, which is good for all your 308s, 30 alt 6s, and my favorite 300 blackout. 